We're talking about the warm weather and that the fish were going to, you know, are, are you going to lose that deep bite? And uh, Seth was like, they're not all the fish are going to go to the bank, you know? So he, he was going to stay firm and fixed with his deep water approach. But uh, I wonder if a lake like this, and I imagine it could be the case, you know, uh, how deep is deep? I, here at Lake Hartwell, it might be, you know, 20 to 50 feet. Maybe it's deeper than that. I still have a hard time even saying it, that it cuts a large <laughs> mouth out of 50 feet of water. You know, it's, it's, it's still unusual to me, but I imagine, I imagine they could be doing that here too. I mean, I've got friends that catch them on the Tennessee River in 40 to 60. So, that's the bottom of the lake. And that's the bottom of the river a lot of times. And yeah. guy, they just don't get fished far down there, and it takes a special approach and a mindset to mm. do that. But here, this lake sets up a lot like Table Rock, you know, mm. it, minus the smallmouth species don't play here. But the difference is the time of year is this is what this warm weather and sunlight penetration spurs the, the movement. But, you know, like at home, um, you'll have more largemouth come out and move shallow first, mm. and then and then the spots of smallmouth. They'll cut, they'll some of them will filter with them, mm -hmm. but usually, and you would think it would be different. You would think the smallmouth would spawn in the colder water temperatures first. They have everything they need out there in those nets, and, it, and you know, and they may move to trees. Simplistic approach of what I think happens, and this is. The, some of this, I mean, obviously we've talked about, I've, I've experienced, mm -hmm. some of it I've observed, and some of it's a little bit of my theory because you kind of have to fill in the blanks. When those fish are in those deep depths like that, and then you're in a lake that has structure, standing structure specifically that ranges in all depths, and it's it's uh, it's formed of such. So you have your, your pre-spawn mode that's going to go in, that's going down right now, and they're coming in to spawn as the water warms up, and you know as well as I do, that is that varies across the nation and it's probably a lot colder than what most people realize that those fish actually start to come up um, because we catch them spawning at table rock in 55 to 60 degree weather or water temperature all the time mm -hmm. but what they do is they'll come out from underneath those balls of shad where they're at where the majority of the fish is and they swim in it's almost like they swim to the first line of trees and they stop and then they come up and then they go to the bank and they almost reverse that procedure whenever they go right back out. Right. And it's it's wow. been cool. Now I've seen that happen mm -hmm. in places, you know, and, yeah. and I theorized that for a while there. And tracking it's not as easy as sitting here talking about it. Because <laughs> yeah. you're not talking about a, a thousand fish that go to the same tree. But you may be talking about a thousand fish using the same half mile tree line. Right, right. That's an interesting. I mean, you paint a really good visual, a graphic of, of how those fish move, and it'd be it'd be interesting to uh, to really dive into that a little bit deeper, you know, to see to, so people can understand how that works because there's so much can uh, you know I guess misunderstanding of what moving shallow really means, uh, you know. But it's but it's really fascinating to talk about this deep water stuff, and uh, I'm you know I'm. Interesting. I, I have gone deep for smallmouth on occasion on some of the bodies of water that I fish. It's very rare occurrence, but because, like I said, my bottom's 20 feet, I'm, I get I get scared to, <laughs> to, to go beneath that. But I, but I, but with the new sonar, new technology, and and what everybody's learning, man, it's fascinating. I can't wait to try it. And the information Bash University provides isn't your basic run-of-the-mill fishing video. This is specific information from A to Z to help you learn, get to the water, and become a better angler quickly.